Hi, and welcome to today's video. My name is Dr. John Heyer, and I'm from Holistic Health and Chiropractic in Frankfurt. And today's video is going to teach you what you can do at home to help determine if you may have any food allergies or sensitivities. And we're going to teach you how you can use Cocos Pulse Test at home. So, what you're going to want to do is you're going to, want to sit down at your kitchen table, and you just want to let your body rest at first. And if you don't know how to take your pulse, you can feel for the radial artery on your wrist or even the carotid artery underneath your neck. And if you don't know how to find that, maybe have somebody help you figure that out. And what you're going to do is you're going to take your pulse for a full 60 seconds. None of that shortcut stuff where you take it for 10 seconds and then times 6 or do it for 15 seconds and multiply by 4. You want to take your pulse for a full 60 seconds. And you're going to want to do it three times. So let's just pretend that we went through it and we did three times for a full 60 seconds and we found that one time we had a pulse rate of 61 beats a minute, another time we had a pulse rate of 62 beats per minute, and another time we found a pulse rate of 63 beats per minute. What we're going to do is we're going to throw out the low, the high, and we're going to take the average. So we're going to throw out the low, throw out the high, and our average is 62. That's our baseline. Now, what you can do is if you suspect or think that there might be some foods that your body is not reacting well to, um, you can gather up those foods at the kitchen table, get some bread, get some dairy, get some milk, some cheese, different proteins, things that you might think that could be an issue, and get small samples of those ready on a little plate. And what you're going to do is now that we've got our baseline, we're going to test each individual food. And what you're going to do I know this sounds gross, but you're going to chew it up for a full 30 seconds. And you're going to masticate, you're going to chew it up, and you're going to break it up into, it's almost like a liquid, it's a gooey mess, and you're going to keep it in there for a full 30 seconds. And then you're going to test that food. And let's just say, for example, we test bread. And you chew that up for 30 seconds, you're going to keep that in your mouth, and check your pulse rate and you're going to write that down and let's say maybe you have a 63 spit that out don't swallow it spit that out rinse your mouth out with water and let's come to the next food and let's say maybe we try oh tomatoes and you're going to take a piece of tomato and you're going to chew that up keep that in there for a good 30 seconds and you're going to check your pulse rate again and let's say that's coming in at 66. You're gonna spit that out, you're gonna take some water, you're gonna clean out your palate, and you're gonna try another food. And let's try, oh, I don't know, peanut butter. And again, you keep that in your mouth for 30 seconds, chew it up, and then you're gonna check your pulse for another 60 seconds, and let's say you come in at 68. After you've done that, and you can do that for any food, you can do that for a supplement, you can even do it for a medication. Keep it in your mouth for 60, 30 seconds and test to see how your, your heart responds. The premise is that if that food or supplement or whatever is causing a stressful situation, your body will have a brief increase in heart rate while your body is adapting and trying to deal with that issue. So let's look at this. Our baseline was 62. Bread brought us in at 63, tomato at 66, and peanut butter at 68. If you have a difference of four or more, there's an issue. Obviously, the more of a difference, the more of an issue with that food. So bread at 63, well, we're only one different. <coughs> tomato at 66, well, we're right on that edge there. Four, we may have a sensitivity or an allergy to that food. Peanut butter brought us in at 68. That's a six point difference. There's definitely an issue going on here. Now, you may not necessarily blow out to a full blown allergy, but what your body is saying, we don't like that food. Now, there's some usual suspects when it comes to our foods and our diet that we should remove, especially if we're trying to lose weight. This can have a big effect on our body's ability to lose weight because if we're eating foods that we may not necessarily have a full blown allergy to, but we have a mild sensitivity to, this can actually impede or slow down how we lose weight. <coughs> the usual bad guys are dairy. 
I know everybody loves cheese, but test it. See how your score is with cheese. Remove dairy, remove cheese, remove milk, and things like that. Gluten-containing foods like wheat, rye, barley, things of that nature. Corn, and every kind of corn product that's out there. High fructose corn syrup and things like that. that includes sodas, that includes drinks, that includes you know all sorts of processed foods. Um, tomatoes tend to be very allergenic and very high in sensitivity, as well as processed foods. Have you ever noticed that if you go to the grocery store, the real food is usually on the outside, whereas the fake food or the boxed food is on the inside? Just avoid that area. And avoid anything that's processed, man-made, man-tampered with, or man-altered, um, because it tends to have a higher likelihood of sensitivity. Okay? So what did we learn? We talked about getting our baseline, check your pulse three times for a full 60 seconds, Take the average and compare that to the foods that you're testing. Anything that's four or more, you probably are having a sensitivity to. And if you need further evaluation, just give us a call at the office and we'll be happy to help you. Thanks. My name is Dr. Heyer and have a great day.